This time on the show, physical memory, extraction, and analysis. All that and more on this episode of Hack 5. This episode of Hack 5 is brought to you by GoDaddy, Squarespace, Gamefly, and viewers like you. Hello and welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen. And I'm Rob Fuller, also known as Mubix. Yeah, and we have an awesome episode for you guys today. We're following up with some of the stuff that we talked about last week with the cold boot attack and thought we'd do some more fun forensics. Um, so we're down here in CW. Right, Colonial Williamsburg for the non-locals. <laughs> and I wanted to come here and see how where, where um, Harrison had done his little hacking and stuff like that. Reference season one for that stuff. Exactly. So speaking of hacking, I, want, I saw the episode about forensics and I wanted to come down and, and um, tell you about penetration testers' use of forensics. Well, I mean, I understand forensics in the viewpoint of, you know, um, I'm contracted to find some stuff on some machine, or there's some malicious stuff on, like, you know, malware analysis and whatnot. How does that change from the viewpoint of a hacker? So a hacker can dump memory, just like you guys used in there. Right. Well, what's in memory? Passwords. Of course, and that's the whole beauty of AES key find, which we'll get to later. Right. So you're saying taking it from the level of, oh, okay, I have access to a box and going ahead and taking advantage of this beautiful forensics tools for black hat funness? Exactly. Oh, I love it. So you want to sit down and Yeah, let's, let's go ahead try and pop a squat and get some stuff going on. Oh, it is also worth mentioning that Matt will be back next week. We are looking forward to him getting back That's from right. Ohio. I wonder if there's any wireless networks around. Uh, probably. With Squarespace, you can build beautiful looking blogs or websites in a fraction of the time it would take with a traditional content management system. Their intuitive drag and drop interface is as snappy and powerful as a desktop publishing app. But best of all, there's no software to install, no databases to configure, no patches to apply, and no code to fiddle with. Find out for yourself how simple and powerful it can be with a two week free trial at squarespace.com. And use promo code HACK5 to support the show and save 10% off the life of your service at squarespace.com. Rob, thanks so much for coming down. No I think before we get too much into it, though, we should recap what we were talking about okay. last week, for those that may have missed not following along, that uh, we were talking about the cold boot attack and uh, using my favorite thing in the world, a standard little inconspicuous, innocent little USB drive. Right. Do the same thing using PXE if you want to really set up a THCP, bleh, DHCP and TFTPD. Right. Um, or you could do like, a, you know, flash a BIOS, like a core boot BIOS and uh, set up a uh, specially crafted motherboard to mm -hmm. go ahead and, you know, freeze RAM, take it out of a machine, image it, or just boot off of USB, image RAM. That's what we're going to be talking about is, you know, acquiring physical memory so that we can do some really fun stuff with it. Uh, I do need to mention that for the people that were confused about compiling it, uh, you do need to add uh, into the C flags or the make files uh, FNOSAC protector. Okay. And if you're really lazy, I've gone ahead and just posted the bin on my blog. So you just DD it right over to your thumb drive nice. and you should be good to go. Um, the bin compiled under Right, well, which I, actually I cheated and just compiled it with GCC before 4.1 so I didn't have to use the FNOSAC protector. But nice. I mean, okay. point being, one, uh, we're, we're going to be talking about gathering physical memory and okay. then fun stuff that we can do with it. And I thought it would be important to, other than the cold boot attack, talk about ways that you would acquire f a physical memory dump from a computer. Now we know that Microsoft does it when there's like a crash. Right. right, does a crash dump. But there are other ways to, and let's just talk about like your standard Windows XP box for our examples here, okay. uh, to get the physical memory for it. I like a tool called, um, well, I like DD on Linux, right? right. But for Windows, uh, I like Win32DD. It's basically a, a, a port that allows you to do the nifty stuff that DD on you know Linux would allow you to do. Right. That is grabbing the stuff from your physical memory and popping it like into a bin file or whatever you want to call it. Um, what about you? So I don't like Win32DD. I like uh, Mantex MDD, mm -hmm. which it's real simple. All you do is, I mean, there's absolutely zero options. You, you run with attack O and say, here's your output. That's mm -hmm. about it. Um, 
I mean, I don't have any problems with that program. It sounds cool. I just wanted to note that Win32DD is both open source and it has two different methods of going about uh, dumping the physical memory. You can just, it'll just copy what's in backslash device backslash physical memory on Windows mm -hmm. uh, or use a kernel API. And, and what's important to note here is that on versions of Windows prior to uh, Windows Server 2003 Service Pack 1, so, um, or I'm sorry, on, on versions since then, so like your Vistas and your Windows 7s and stuff, right. uh, don't allow um, user mode access to physical memory. Right. And uh, so what, yeah, you have to kind of go, you know, basically Win32DD um, is all kernel mode to do all this stuff. And I right. thought that that brought up something that we never really talked about on the show here. And I figured that it'd be, you know, important to note that um, the difference between such. So like kernel mode is having like bare, Rings, ring zero. Yeah, it's like bare metal access right. to the hardware. You can do whatever you want to it. You know, that's, that's you know, that's what I'm talking about. That right there is uh, is kernel mode. But um, but then like, or like, you know, if I wanted some muffins and I just stole a muffin, you know, there there you go. Or, you know, user mode, you gotta <laughs> ask for the muffins. You gotta ask for permission. You, right. And you don't know what muffin you're gonna get, right? You okay. get the one that, you know, the grantor decides to give you. So Ring three. In, in, you know, user mode, Windows uh, 32 we're talking about, uh, you can't touch the bare metal, you have to go through APIs and stuff. Mm -hmm. So. Um, and if you're interested in that kind of stuff about the uh, like NT, you know, hardware abstraction layer and IO managers and a whole bunch of stuff, I'll, I'll have links in the show notes to some really nitty gritty stuff. But okay. suffice it to say, uh, Windows memory dumping utilities made prior to Windows Server 2003 Service Pack 1 may not function correctly on versions since then. So, you know, just something to look out for. Well, as long as you're an administrator or running the, the um, tool as an administrator, you have you sort of have access to uh, Ring Zero. Right, and you know, getting administrator access on Windows is like making cupcakes. So, or uh, con booting. Yeah, there you go. Well, you know, it's it's funny that okay, so we've been talking about con boot, and we've been excited about this con boot stuff, but there was actually a uh, another just as simple method, not as easy to to build the device, but another device type method for bypassing Windows logins, not as. Anyway, that's kind of similar that I thought would uh, be worth mentioning here because it also ties into uh, dumping physical memory. Okay. And that is Firewire devices, um, yes. by just the nature of the spec, uh, a Firewire device has access to the physical memory. Right. So what that means is, uh, for example, a you know Firewire iPod with Linux could be specially gra crafted with some cool software to plug into you know generic Windows box and access that physical memory, right. read to it, uh, read from it, and write to it. And then once you can do that, you know where I'm Go. going with here. Right. It's the it's the plug and pwn. It's the you know bypass uh, bypass all sorts of Windows restrictions just right. because you can because go it's ahead. firewire. Yeah, and, and I, it's written in spec. And it's even it's just as inconspicuous as a USB drive. So I mean. Right. I don't mean to tease, it's probably a topic for a more in-depth discussion and some lab stuff later on, but, um, you know, it's, it's something to note there. So let's go ahead and dump some physical memory and then throw it through some of our toys and see what we can come up with. Definitely. And I, I wanted to say that um, if you do throw it through some toys like we're going to, use them all. Just like I said with the, the I mean, use all of your tools because sometimes you get other results than, like, we're going to show, anyways. Yeah, Mubix, the Boy Scout, all the tools. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But let's thank one of our awesome sponsors. Keep your personal information away from spammers, hackers, and your crazy ex-roommate. Private domain registration from GoDaddy.com protects your privacy by keeping your address, phone number, and more out of the public database. Check out Revision3.com slash GoDaddy for all of our GoDaddy codes and offers. So we've gone ahead and taken our physical memory dumps and I've loaded them up here in my Linux side of my machine and I've gone ahead and grabbed one from my computer using uh, Win32DD. I grabbed mine from MDD. Excellent. And we got them both over there. What's, what's the first tool that we throw them through that you like? Volatility, of course. It's Python, so it's cross-platform. It runs on Windows, Linux. Potentially uh, Mac? No, not really, if you consider it a platform. All right. Um, so what you can do with volatility that I like is you can um, dump the running processes at the time. You can um, DLLs, connections, sockets, uh, registries, registry keys. I, I think it's really cool that we could, like, 
when I, I did this on mine and I can go ahead and actually see, hey, truecrypt.exe is one of the processes that is running, which clues me into, oh, hey, maybe I should start, you know, and we'll talk about the other uh, paths that we can take there. But further from that, you're explaining to me that we can actually uh, take executables that are running and extract those. How does, how does that work? What's the benefit there? Okay, so you can actually, so whenever you run a process, it gets loaded into memory. Like, so the for example, thing. on Windows XP, if I were to load up QBasic, if I wanted to get my 20 go to 10 on, QBasic.exe would be resident in memory. Correct. And you can, just, with volatility, you just pull it right down. Where that helps out is with malware analysis. Um, so bad guys like to pack and encrypt and, and put executables so that AV can't detect them. Right. Um, going across the wire, however. If, but in memory, it has to be running, right? It has to be actually functioning. It can't be encrypted or, or compressed. Mm -hmm. So dumping it out of uh, memory... Bypasses the whole packer issue. Exactly. Gotcha. And that's what the AV guys probably have, you know, those special networks set up just to monitor that sort of thing. Right. So um, some of the more deep malware analysis guys have something called a dark net or, or, a, um, or a box that sits directly connected to the network uh, to the internet, it has maybe a Linksys in front of it just to make it look like it's a, a home box. Mm -hmm. And it has a special piece of hardware or software that um, the OS is, is uh, unaware of mm -hmm. and will dump everything to a ne another hard drive, uh, memory, uh, connections, um, and any hard, uh, hard drive changes. So when it reboots though, it will um, revert re back and now you have a fresh dark net again. So this is like, oh, I love that. That has got like the, the steady state type yep, thing. where you exactly. And, and since it's external hardware that is doing this monitoring, it's unbeknownst to the botnet or the zombie processes that right. this so, is going on. So it can't say detect VMware. Right. So I'm not going to run it. This, for example, is, this is basically a honeypot for right. botnets. Right. I love it. That's awesome. Um, and you can leave it going as long as you want to, which is nice. Yeah. Now, going back to volatility, it's important to note that if you want to get playing with this, they do actually provide some example data. So you can go ahead and start using some of their images and right. uh, some techniques there to, you know, pull some stuff out and, and play with it and learn with it. And you were telling me that we can actually extend upon the program. Oh, definitely. So since Python or since it's written in Python, there have been tons of Francis guys that have done scripts for it. Mm -hmm. um, one of my favorites of all is dumping passwords. So you can, you can dump the SAM file because the SAM file is in memory. Mm -hmm. You dump the SAM file and we're going to show you how to do that. Yes. Sure. Yeah. Awesome. And, and, and uh, like we said, you know, it's like, like windows and passwords, it's, it's cupcakes. Um, so awesome stuff there, but so, right. So we've gone ahead, we've run it through this program and we have an idea of what the processes are running, what connections. Now you say connections it's made. Now that's not to say like the cache that is stored from your like Firefox or, or your Chrome internet cache. We're talking about the connections, like the SOX connections and stuff that are, you know what I'm saying? Because we mentioned that uh, we can list running processes, but open network connections. When you're right. talking about that, you're talking okay. about... Yeah, so when it shows connections, it's not just what it's connected right now. Mm -hmm. It's uh, since it's the boot of the system. So Most if you go to a web page, it, that, that connection to that IP address uh, stays in memory for a while. Nice. At least until reboot. So what I find is that when we go through here and we say, oh, truecrypt.exe is running. Oh, we've got these cool IP addresses. Oh, you know, the, the clues start going off and you start, oh, I really want to dig deep into this and see, you know, um, what's really going on with this. Um, and, and of course, dumping the SAM to get that password because why not? Well, speaking of passwords, uh, last week we talked about AES Key Finder and I wanted True to crypt. mention that um, you know, with volatility, if you see something like TrueCrypt or some of the other um, encryption uh, products out there running right. in memory, you might want to run this because uh, they've got an AES key finder and a, um, it's, I uh, can't remember off the top of my head what the other one is, the other encryption, RSA, RSA right. key finder, right. right? So it's just, you know, dot slash AES key find and then you uh, tell it where your memory dump is and there we go, we actually start seeing keys coming out of here right. which is awesome then you have then you if you have the hard drive as well mm -hmm. um, you unencrypt it and you're good way to go because um, the memory can't be encrypted well, and, and the other thing to say is that um, 
Right, so we start with the memory because that was what we could get, but then once you've got the password the hard drive, all the other fun stuff that you can then throw through other tools, uh, uh, Foremost, and I think that's that's ah, a uh, that, that uh, I think the the hard drive stuff is a topic for another show. But but let's touch on foremost here because I mentioned it just briefly last week, and I think it's it's worth uh, reiterating how cool this tool is. So basically, foremost is a tool for uh, forensics analysis for recovering stuff from from memory uh, uh, files and files based on the headers of files, the footers of files. And, um, and signatures within a file. So, oh, hey, this certain structure looks like a JPEG. Let's just extract everything in between here and there and say it's a JPEG and put it in a folder. And that's what it does. Beautifully. Yeah, and my favorite option by far with it is uh, TAC-T, all, because it's got all these different profiles. It understands JPEGs and GIFs and Word documents and stuff, but you do all against your memory dump and any file that was open that it understands, it just throws it into a, a folder called output and it is so much fun to dig through. So we've got this Foremost also has the ability, um, some people who have been working on other plugins for it, so you can download those as well. Right. And with uh, and like uh, with volatility, Foremost also provides um, uh, digital forensics tools like test images that you can go ahead and download and play with. So we encourage you guys to go ahead and download some of these test images, play with these tools, and let us know what you think. Uh, but and there's nothing better than doing it on your own image. I mean, all you have to do is download the tool, and and you have your right. the image of your own memory, so you can kind of. Right, so you know, on, on your Windows uh, VM, go ahead and run Win32DD. There you go. Because it's cooler than Movix's tool. I want to let everybody know that Gamefly is an amazing service. They are the largest online video game rental service and offer a choice of over 6,000 new and classic titles across all consoles and handhelds. With plans starting at $15.95 a month, Gamefly members can rent one to four games at a time and keep them for as long as as they like. You can also purchase a game if you fall in love with it. They'll send you the box and the manual for a nominal fee. Head on over to Gamefly.com slash hack5 to get two-week free trial membership. Gamefly.com slash hack5. That just about wraps up this episode of Hack 5, uh, but we want to let you know a couple of things. First of all, we do have the August 15th meetup coming up. Yes, August 15th, we are having an awesome Hack 5 meetup over at Bush Gardens in Williamsburg, Virginia. You can join us on August 15th, and you can go over to hack5meetup.squarespace.com for all the details. Right, and you can con your parents into doing it by telling them you're going to take them down to do Colonial it. Williamsburg and see all the like historic yeah. stuff. And then just join on. us at the German beer house that's in Bush Gardens. Yes, yeah. Fest House, noon. It's going to be awesome. Um, I also wanted to let you know that you can send us feedback at feedback at hack5.org or use the contact form at the top of the page at hack5.org and we love to hear what you guys think about the show, uh, what tools you guys use, so you know, let us know. Yeah. <laughs> and we also want to tell you about our very sweet brand new show on Revision 3, HD Nation. Revision 3's newest show, HD Nation, is your guide to the best in HD content and the best in home theater gear, no matter what your budget is. HDTV expert Robert Heron and movie fanatic Patrick Norton will bring you the inside scoop on the movies, TV shows, and downloads that'll make your HDTV shine along with the best bargains in HD from satellite to Blu-ray sales every Tuesday at revision3.com slash hdnation. Also, we can't forget to tell you about Podcaster Meetup. You guys remember it if you meet, met us at ChmooCon or many of the other hacker cons that this is held at. Movis does a great job organizing it and they will be at DEF CON this year. So if you're going, Saturday is the night. Get all the details over at podcastersmeetup.com. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this week. We do want to let you know Matt will be back next week and we will be back in studio. Yes, we will. I miss that studio. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, until then, we're reminding you, trust your techno lust. Forget it. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen. And, and I'm I am Rob totally Pol ripping Jen Cutter's very first episode. Sorry. Well, go ahead and kill it because that thing's overhead. Which it isn't supposed to be. It's restricted airspace. The, the road of like IDA Pro and disassembling right. and, and, and fun stuff like that. And we're specifically talking about, um, Hello. about uh, disassembly. It's okay. No problem.